Good morning, or whatever time of day you're watching this. It's morning for me. My name is Jason Lee Taco, and we're going to be doing this autumn scene that you just uh, got a preview of. If you're new to my channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and like this video. Hopefully you like it. What I do is I show the first uh, 20 minutes or so to the YouTube public. Um, the rest is for my Patreon supporters. So if you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can see this whole video without commercials in its entirety. So I want to get this, these trees in here, and I really like the top. This is a very complex scene. What I like about it is those trunks offset by those um, kind of rust red colors. Uh, speaking of colors, uh, colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium, ye cadmium yellow light, that really could almost be cadmium lemon, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, uh, transparent red oxide, uh, cadmium red medium, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and viridian. So I'm going to take a little brush been experimenting with these uh, Eclipse brushes by Rosemary and Company. These trees are very tall. I might uh, try to get the whole thing though with my painting. Kind of like that feel there. I'm going to not draw exactly what's there, but try to come up with something that's interesting for us with abstract shapes and everything. There's this one big tree that comes out over the top. Keeping this very loose and sketchy, that way I can make decisions later. If I lose some of my lines, no big deal. Nice thing is you don't have to draw trees exactly how they are. There's a lot of room for interpretation. So just be mindful of that when you're doing trees. Don't obsess over exactly where the branch is coming out. Just try to get the rhythm of it. And if it's something that's new to you, if you're not familiar with it, I just suggest you um, put in the work and go out and sketch a lot of trees. That's what John F. Carlson talked about. Go out and draw trees. And I totally agree I think that is a great idea so this is just to give me an approximate of where everything's going to go a lot of this will be lost but this helps me to visualize it and I can keep that vision somewhat in my mind as I continue to paint get up a very low ground plane the ground plane doesn't really mean much of anything and it does but it's not it's not what this is about. It's about what's going on in there. So that gives me kind of an idea. If you've watched my videos before, you know I don't obsess too much over composition out here in the field. Just because time's pretty limited, I'm more after you know those colors and values. And then later on I will uh Maybe work out the composition in the studio if I decide to draw or paint this later. I do teach live online painting classes through Zoom. I also do what's called a monthly demo where I do a studio painting from start to finish with full explanation. It goes a lot deeper into it where I thoroughly explain everything just because I have the time to. I don't have the time to explain everything out here. It'd be like a figure skater trying to explain what they're doing in the midst of figure skating. It just um, doesn't work when you teach something to somebody. You can demonstrate it for them, but to really teach it to them, you kind of have to stop doing it yourself and focus on them. And so with my student or with my uh, online demos, that's kind of what I do is I I, I do the painting, but I really, you know, explain every single color mixture, all the theory behind it. Do a little bit of that out here, but there just isn't the time. And 
also this is free so so if you're interested in that uh, I do have links for that or you can just email me jason at jasontaco.com just my first name and then my first and last name dot com and let me know and I can help you get signed up. It's very, very thorough instruction I've had. Many of my students tell me it's the best they've ever found online. Especially the live classes, because you get to ask a lot of questions and paint live with me and get feedback and everything. All right, so one thing I really like is these shapes down here at the bottom. I'm going to get a little haphazard here with this. And just trying to block in some approximate darks. I'm not intent, I don't intend on painting the scene exactly how it is. This is a very complex scene and Sometimes I think I need to get my head examined for even trying to do this, but I do sometimes bite off more than I can chew. We'll see if I did it this time. If I did, you know, maybe I'll post this video, maybe, maybe I won't, so. Main thing I should do right now is get the white of the canvas covered up. It's just miserable to try to draw around all that stuff. There are a lot of sky holes in here. I will just paint those in later on top. Might try to keep it a little thinner in the approximate area where the sky holes are going to go. Now, this I'm starting out with more of an approximate color. Uh, I did have a student recently ask me, you know, you, you said to sneak up on it, and now you're in one of my other autumn paintings. I just kind of went for the gusto very early in the process. And it just, and they asked why, kind of depends on my mood and my confidence level and everything of how I feel about the scene. I don't adhere to an exact um, specific process when I'm out uh, painting, when I'm doing any kind of painting, really. You should always be open to do to different um, ideas and processes and methods of doing things. And I have my method, but my method even changes from time to time, just depending on what, what I'm encountering, how I'm feeling that day, what my confidence level is, so on and so forth. So uh, just bear that in mind. It doesn't have to be the same every time, and a lot of times it can't be. You have to adapt for different situations out in nature when you're painting. And depends on what you might struggle with. So if I encounter um, color and value combinations that I'm not used to, I might take a more cautious approach. And if I encounter, you know, things that I'm very used to, then I might not be too concerned about it. I can just go in right away with the, with the big stuff. And big stuff, I mean like the, the main, um, the intense colors and everything. And that's really how you should learn how to paint. You shouldn't paint to satisfy a process all right you should enjoy the process the process should work for you but if you have the idea to do something different or to try something different or something isn't working for you you shouldn't just go well this is how i paint this is my process i always do the neutral colors first right I always do the most intense colors first and 
if it doesn't fit in my process and forget it. Um, that could just lock you in to a very uh, um, conservative way of painting, which is not always a good thing. Unless you paint a very, very similar subject matter, that could work for you. But if you want to branch out and paint other things and try other things, you might need to adapt your style. So that's kind of a long way of saying, um, I had already answered that question for that particular person, but that's kind of a long way of answering it for everybody else. That it just depends. All right, I'm gonna do, speaking to do something different, I'm gonna hit this with a bit of mineral spirits. I'm just squirting. Something I've been playing with once in a great while. Kind of similar to what watercolors do. Why am I doing this? I'm not really sure. I just, I wanted to play with some of the texture, different ways of getting texture and different effects. And I thought this might be kind of cool. There's a hawk up there. See, doing something like this, I could step pretty wet in there, but it can kind of move me in a different direction. I don't, I've only done this a couple times with planter painting, but I am somewhat enjoying it. I started out in watercolor and had a brief uh, fling with uh, acrylic paints but the relationship didn't work out too well and I had to break up with acrylics. Nothing against acrylics, just it just didn't work for me. I didn't like the super fast drying time and the look that they gave. So I broke up with acrylics and I proposed to oils and she said yes and here we are. We've been happily together for a long time now. All right, let's get some of that ground in there. In the studio lately, I've really been on a kick using Venetian red. but I don't have any in out here. So with this, I'm trying to get an approximate in there. There's a interesting tone with this sun with these sun lake grasses it's a you can tell they're warm but they have an interesting kind of neutral feel it's so hard to explain a, a feeling of restraint in these yellows and greens and i really want to capture that i always love it when i can see that in other artists work and what i mean by restraint is that they're not going hardcore with the most intense colors right away. They are um, they're neutralizing them, they're holding them back. John F. Carlson talks a lot about that in his guide to landscape painting, about how you want to uh, have restraint in your work. Okay, so 
I'm gonna get in a little more of that intensity up toward the top there. Looks like my brushes are about to fall. And that could be a tricky color too. These are old, big old oak trees. And they have this very interesting rust color. Kind of a rust, it's not really an orange. Straight up, it's got some orange in it. It's not really a red, but it's got a little bit of red in it. And I'll make sure I keep the value restrained because I still have that sky to put in there. That's pretty good. Maybe a touch of yellow. This is mostly a front lit scene, which is not always the most advisable thing to start out painting. Front lit scenes are some of the most challenging out there to do in my opinion. Everything is equally lit. It's more challenging to show form. Now over here, there's a tree that has more green and yellow in it. And even though in my scene it's not right there, I'm gonna put it right there. This more intense color. I probably will hold this back just a bit. There, that's a nice variety there. I like that. And I do like how squirting the mineral spirits on there has given me kind of a makeshift texture of leaves. right at the very beginning. Some hints of green, yellow green in there. Let's get those in. My canvas is still kind of wet from the mineral spirits. That is one challenge. Things tend to slide around a bit more than what I like them to with using this technique. So Something I might try to perfect. I might abandon it, who knows, we'll see. Let's go a little heavier on the orange down here. I think basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of chaos. Yeah, see, look at that. That mineral spirits is still very wet. That's one of the challenges with this. These pinks really cool down a bit. Add some white and a bit of um transparent red oxide so i don't want any i don't want them to get too cool Just kind of hoping the uh, mineral spirits would evaporate a little faster than what they are. So if you try this and your painting becomes a disaster, I did warn you. And um, this is a tricky process. You might want to experiment at home if you're a plein air painter first and see how it works for you. 
the whole thing about spraying the you know, spirits on your canvas first. Otherwise, I'll have people yelling at me on my YouTube channel. At this point, just doing some hardcore impressionism. I think of this, I'm gonna have to blot a little bit. Some of the, as I was saying, blot some of this wet paint off. I still have some of the texture, it's just in those really dark areas. Just will not, um, not evaporate in enough, fast enough. I want to be careful, I think I'm getting too dark with those darks in there. I really wish I had Venetian red out here. I've absolutely fallen in love with that, with that color for this kind of stuff. That's too light in value. Mixing to try to get a nice dark that has some color in it, like what I'm seeing out there. That's better. I don't want my darks to look like a flat or like a big empty hole. I mean, these are holes in the trees here where these darks are, but there's still substance back there. It's not like a black hole or something. And you want to avoid black holes in your painting. Sometimes the darkest value is definitely needed, but not as often as you think. One thing I notice when I um, do my live critique sessions for my students, and not so much there, it's usually with paintings that they've worked on previously on their own. But um, I also see this a lot in just things I'll see on social media and everything and paintings and that is, you know, the values are just way too extreme. The darks are, you know, if they see something dark, they'll just paint it black. And you don't want to do that because there's color in there. And you want to see that. And a lot of times that's the result from just painting from photos. Because photos just turn things black. And if you don't paint from life, you won't know that. You'll, you'll make think that photo is the master of, you know, the dominant thing that's going to determine the quality of your painting. And... So you'll just paint it black because that's what's in the photo. That's why it's so good to get out and paint from life if you can. And when you're in a museum, look at how the masters handled the darks. A lot of times they're not as dark as you think. Depending on the style, there are some, you know, portrait work and things like that where they did get fairly dark in the background and everything. But especially landscapes. Rarely does a uh, full strength dark work in a landscape painting. Not saying it can't, there are times where it can, but you gotta be careful with that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stop here. 
and switch over to my Patreon only members. The Patreon only, Patreon only side. Um, if you want to see that, just click on the link below, become a Patreon subscriber. Subscriber. If you do, I thank you tremendously because it's that kind of support and help that really keeps me going on this. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't do it. I just paint and paint in my studio and that's it. But uh, anyway, so think about becoming a Patreon subscriber and you can see this whole video. Uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not. And I thank you so much for watching and we will see you again.